Gerald Tate's here. He wants to know what's happening to his deal. Go get Harvey. Trust me, I can handle Gerald Tate. I'm sorry, you say the best to me? Harvey, when are you gonna leave Pierce and work for a man? I'll leave Jessica anytime you want. You just have to formally ask. And then after that, why don't you formally ask Santa Claus to bring you a pony, because I'm not leaving Jessica. I check. Raise 5,000. I'm all in. You can pay me later. I gotta go. Gentlemen. I'm paying you millions. And you're telling me I'm gonna get screwed? Jessica, have I come at a bad time? Gerald. This is Harvey Specter. He's our best closer. Well, if you're the best closer, where the hell you been for the last three hours? Well, Gerald, I specialize in troubled situations. And when I left here at 7 p.m., this deal wasn't in jeopardy. So I'm just trying to figure out what happened in the interim. And we keep offering more money, they keep rejecting it. It's last minute bad faith. It says here that Cooper won't be staying on as honorary vice president. That's right, I don't want him around. He wouldn't be around. It's an honorary position. I don't give well, I think you do, because that's what's changed since I left, which means it's you who's been dealing in bad faith. Well, now that you've got a grasp on what's happened in the goddamn interim, what are you going to do about it? Because he's not getting that title. Well, let me make sure I understand this, OK? We negotiated a deal that gave you everything you wanted. Mr. Cooper signed it. And now you won't close until we take away the last shred of his dignity? Bingo. Well, that's not going to happen. And why the hell not? Because I like Mr. Cooper, and my firm doesn't operate in bad faith. Oh, I see how it is. Instead of working Cooper, you're working me. Well, why don't you take your pansy attitude back in there and make him sign my deal? Or I'll pay someone else your money to do it for me. Well, first of all, Gerald, if you think anyone's going to touch this deal after your bad faith, you're mistaken. Second, the way our agreement works is the minute Cooper signed the deal, which gave you everything you wanted, our fee was due and payable, which is why at 7.30, I received confirmation of a wire transfer from escrow indicating payment in full. So I'd say the ball's in your court, but the truth is your balls are in my fist. Now, I apologize if that image is too pansy for you, but I'm comfortable enough with my manhood to put it out there. Now, get your ass in there and close the goddamn deal. You let him talk to me like this? Harvey speaks for the firm. We got paid before Gerald signed the deal. What are you talking about? This is a memo about some fire drill on Tuesday. Huh. You're the blue team captain. You get to wear a fire hat. somewhere? I don't think so. A pretty good memory for faces. Uh -huh. So do I. Sorry. I got it.
said I was gonna get you, a 158. I, I told you I wanted a 175. And I told you only one out of 100 people can score that. You're a B minus student, you got a thousand on your SATs. If I get you a 175, they'll know you cheated. So only a genius loser can get a 175? <laughs> Actually, no, I would get a 180. I can I have my money, please? This is only half. Then why don't you go call the police? You're a fraud and you know it. But it's too good to throw it all away. Anyone would do the same. You got them going. And you're careful not to show it. Sometimes you even Nervous? <sighs> I'd be lying if I said no. Well, I wouldn't want you to lie. She knows. She can't. She dies. What's holding on my Swinton merger? Are you kidding me? We've been over this, okay? If she knew, you'd know. I do know. The woman barely knows my name, and she just summoned me for dinner. What is so funny? Watson, Kleiman, Gallo, Goldberg, Inspector. Why are you naming the last five senior partners? Every one of us was taken to dinner by Jessica as a first year, and now she's taking you, which means... This is a good thing. Exactly. Oh, God. What now? What do I wear? What, what do I say? What do I wear? We can discuss the prom at recess. Tell me, what the hell's holding up my Swinton merger? Oh, it's just a nuisance suit that needs to be cleaned up before we can clear escrow. I'm all over it. Why wasn't that the first thing you told me? Uh, I thought I was getting exposed. This is a little less important. My merger? Your panic attack. Your compassion. And I didn't have a panic attack. I had a legitimate reason for concern. Really? Why would she ask you to dinner just to fire you? I don't know. A little movie called Goodfellas. Do you see it? Joe Pesci thought he was getting made. He got dead. That's your idea of a legitimate reason? Karen! Where's the money, Karen? Go back to your cubicle. Hey, wait a minute. Do you, do you think that I might get an office out of this dinner? A second ago, you thought you were going to get whacked. Now you want an office? Well, I'm adapting to changing circumstances. Huh. Well, maybe you won't be the worst lawyer in the history of everything. Put the gun down, Karen. Karen? They never checked. What do you mean, they never checked? The internet was not what it is today. It was not so easy to catch plagiarism. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Wait a minute. If you graduated college then, then that, that would make you... Old enough to run my own law firm. But you look so young. Well, you know what they say. Mm-hmm. True beauty Black is ageless. Black don't crack. <laughs> <clears throat> That's what I meant to say. Uh huh. <laughs> well, enough about me. I want to hear about you. What was Harvard like? I was three when I realized that I wasn't like the other kids. When school started, it, it was like a it was like a joke. I didn't take notes. I never studied. Every year, people would tell me, "Next year, you won't get away with it." Kept waiting for it to get harder, but just never did. And Harvard? I knew it would end. And it had to. I thought, yeah, I'd finally found a place where I'd be uh, exposed. But it turns out, even at the mighty Harvard Law, you weren't the same as the other kids. I know it sounds cocky. Not to me. The fact is, you don't think of yourself as smart. You've always had your mind. It just is what it is. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. I don't, I don't think of myself as smart. You know, I just think of everybody else as... Idiots. Not smart. That's what I meant to say. Why the law? It's kind of uh, personal. Isn't that why we're here? <sighs> when I was 11, my parents were on their way home from dinner, and they were involved in a really horrible accident. And uh, they... My grandmother took me in. And it wasn't until I was uh, much older that, that I realized that we had a case. See, it turns out this restaurant kept feeding this Mr. Fenton drinks long after they knew. Didn't matter. 
I just, I felt so helpless. And I didn't want to feel that way ever again. Harvey was right. About what? I hope you brought your checkbook. Dinner's on you. Wait, wh what was Harvey right about? How was dinner? Free caviar. What's not to love? If you want to know something about me, you should have just asked me. Why can't I just be getting to know Mr. Ross the way I got to know you? Because if you're just trying to get to know him, you would have told me about the dinner. Something's going on, and I want to know what it is. An allegation was made that Mike Ross never went to Harvard or any other law school, for that matter. So I had him checked out. Squeaky clean. Graduated top of his class. So I took him to dinner. I wanted to see what you saw in him that makes him so special. And? I get it. He's a total package. Maybe even the best of both of us. I hope this doesn't mean you're going to put me in charge of recruiting. No, not to worry. You are off the hook. Harvey, one more thing. He might have checked out clean. But I know that kid's full of shit. Because there may be a record of him graduating from Harvard Law, but there's no record of him graduating from any college anywhere on the face of the earth. So I'm going to give you the benefit of the doubt that you didn't know. Because I don't want to do what I would do if you did. And what you're going to do is fire that goddamn kid. I got your message. What's going on? Partners meeting. Essential personnel only. In the middle of the night? You afraid of the dark? I wouldn't be if I had my cookie monster with me. Well, then go get him, because we're finalizing the terms of the merger. We? We. So I'm a partner now? Easy, Marsha Clark. Jessica and I discussed it. You're responsible for making this merger happen. You deserve to be here. So Jessica and you talked? You forgave her? She won. I lost. Nothing to forgive. And me? You did what you had to do. <sighs> you have no idea how much I needed to hear that. The merger is complete. And we would like to show everyone that the new Darby Pearson will be stronger, better connected. And most importantly, based on a foundation that is full of sh What the hell's going on? I told her. I told her what? That Mike Ross is a fraud and I am not going to let him get away with it. How could you do this? You did this to yourself. <sighs> How long are you gonna keep staring at that offer? Until one of us blanks. Darren signed it, you said it was great. I'm not interested in great. I wanted to know who its daddy is. What is it, Donna? It's Sunday night. Darby needs an answer. London. Send her to London. Do you want to talk about it? Have Ray meet me downstairs. And where should I say you're going? Brooklyn. I did not expect the great Harvey Specter to come all the way to Brooklyn just to deliver a contract. That's good, because I came for the hot dogs. I told you that was our final offer. You did, 
But the third quarter's about to end, and if you want Darren Williams playing for you in the fourth, this is his number. Even if you had another offer, which you don't, you can't leave in the middle of a game. I was talking about the fourth quarter of game seven when you're looking to lock up a championship. Because the question isn't do you want Darren or not, it's do you want a ring or not? You got nothing. And I told you that's my final offer. I guess I'll just have to go bring Darren his new Mavs jersey then. There's no way Mark Cuban pays that much. Why don't you call and ask? Oh, wait. You can't because he hates you. We may not be blood brothers, but he doesn't hate me. Oh, he does now. Evidently, he found out about that thing from last May. How do you know that? Because I was there when I told him. You have until 10 a.m., then I'm calling Dallas. And Mark may not take your call, but he'll sure as hell take mine. How do I know you're not going to turn around and get him to pay more? You don't. But if you don't match this, you'll never find out. Jessica. Harvey. I don't recall giving you my key. I don't recall authorizing you to negotiate behind Darren Williams' back. His back is just fine, and I'm standing right behind it. Then why is the contract he signed in my hand? How much did you ask for? Triple. You out of your mind? We have leverage. And what is that? It's complicated. Simplify it for me. I bluffed him. That's not leverage. It is if he believes it. And if it fails, he fires us and takes 10 other players with him. Then it better not fail. You asked the man for triple. If I had what I said I had, that's what I'd get. I don't ask for triple. He knows I'm bluffing. Then don't bluff in the first place. I'm afraid that's what I do. You know what I think? I think you want it to fail. I think you're stuck with a merger you don't want and a non-compete you can't stand, and you're trying to get me to fire you. I could bust that non-compete wide open. But you gave me your word. Which is why I'm staying. Jessica, I've always operated this way. It's what you hired me for. It's what you pay me for. And it used to be what you valued me for. I'm not going to fire you. Neither is Darren Williams. Nets just caved. So, unless you're looking to cook me breakfast tomorrow, I'd say we're done. I told you I needed time. I know, but it's been two days and I can't take it anymore. I had to see you. I don't want any comments about how messy the place is. Okay. And what would clean look like? Don't even think about it. I can't not think about it, all right? It's all I've been able to think about for two days. Mike, why are you here? Because that's not gonna happen. Now or ever? <laughs> you lied to me about everything. Rachel. Do you remember when I told you I needed time? That's what I needed it for, to process this bomb that you dropped on me. I had a nightmare. You asked why I'm here, that's why I... You exposed me to the entire firm. I would never do that. I know. And I woke up and I realized that the real nightmare wouldn't even be that. The real nightmare would be... Would be if you didn't want to be with me. Do you really mean that? I meant it the first time I ever saw you. Rachel... I know that I'm not who you want me to be, but you know what happened in that room. You know what we both felt. I, I don't want to lose that. I just keep wishing you never told me. But then it never would have happened. And it did. And I'm, I'm really glad that it did. But what happens if you get caught? Because what you had may have been a nightmare, Mike, but you can't tell me you're not afraid of being exposed. Of course I am. But there's nothing that I can do about it. Well, maybe there is. What are you saying? Quit. Go in tomorrow and just quit. No, I
Going to work or school? Both. You think you have time for some of this? <laughs> Maybe if you loan me your limo. Hmm. I'm sure we could work something out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Getting dressed. I did get dressed. And then you got undressed. I got a little hot. Yes, you did. Come to think of it, it is getting a little warm in here. Mr. Gillis, Mike Ross, nice to meet you. You should know I'm only doing this as a courtesy to Jonathan Sidwell, but I'll tell you right now, the answer is no. Good. Why good? Because a yes is always so much better when it starts as a no. You're a confident young man, but I know what my distribution centers are worth. You know what they're worth to you. This is what they're worth to me. This is bigger than I expected. Yeah, I've heard that before. OK, fun time's over. I'm not interested in selling to someone who I don't know where they're coming from. And let me tell you where I'm coming from. I do my homework. These centers are a beacon to every predator out there that you haven't laid the groundwork to get out of the DVD business. Sounds to me like where you're coming from is trying to scare me. No, no, I'm not trying to scare you. I'm trying to help you. They're circling, and you know it. You don't do this. You might as well send out an invitation asking for a hostile takeover. This number can't be real. It is. And what the hell are you going to do with my distribution centers? I'll be happy to tell you that five seconds after I buy them. Walter, I know you want your people to be OK. And I give you my word they will be. But these centers, they become a headache. And you need cash for when those predators come knocking. Let them knock. I'm not answering the door. No, you're not hearing me. If you don't raise enough money, they're coming in whether you answer that door or not. The offer's good for another hour. You are not my hair gelled partner in crime. I haven't used hair gel since ninth grade. I was trying to avoid the frizzy look. Where is he? Uh, Donna said that he had a morning meeting outside of the office. And where's Donna? Right here. I prefer to appear at the exact moment I'm needed. I wish I could say the same for Harvey. Oh, well, Harvey has a say very... It. She may have been born yesterday, but I know that morning meeting doesn't mean morning meeting. Everyone knows that. It's just not my place to say it. Not mine either. He did it yesterday, too. When he resurfaces, tell Spectre Pearson wants to see him. I used moose in high school. It was the 90s. Was it? I heard that. Did you bring me lunch? Chen Dynasty. How many egg rolls are in here? Two. You closed Gillis. Oh, I killed Gillis. 
Well, I hope you told them no mushrooms in the lo mein. You never told me that. I didn't think I had to. Aren't you supposed to be the one taking care of me? Oh, how am I supposed to do that when there are mushrooms in my lo mein? Why do I keep you around again? Deal memo on Friedman Technologies, engagement letter signed by Stillman, and oh, two front row tickets to Daft Punk for you and Rachel tonight. But why do I keep you around? Mike, Sidwell's in there waiting for you. Be careful, okay? He's not in a good mood. It's okay. You know why? Because I killed it with Gillis. Hey, Amy. Yeah? Eat the mushrooms. They're good for you. Screw you. Morning. Where have you been? Oh, you know, just getting Walter Gillis to sell us all of his distribution centers. Oh. What the hell are you doing? What's it look like I'm doing? I'm sending a message. We're not a convent. We're in business to make money. And this deal does that. You did this deal to retain those people's jobs. And to make us 30%. We're a hedge fund. If we don't make 50%, we might as well buy timeshares and hope for the best. That's bull. This deal is solid. No, what's bull is you've been here for three months. All you've done is hit singles, and I need a goddamn home run. Jonathan, I don't want to hear it. I want you to get your head out of your ass. Stop trying to save people's jobs and start making us some real money. Or go back to being a lawyer. Cave on the billables, but if he wants someone to kiss his ass all day, he'll have to settle for Lewis. <laughs> and what did he say? I don't know, but we got paid, and I haven't heard from him in a week. I have to say, Harvey, all things considered, you're taking this whole Donna Lewis thing in stride. Well, I may have my issues, but they only make me stronger. Good, because we're about to walk into a room packed with people who think they've got us by the balls. Oh, I don't care what they think, because I'm going to kill it. What the hell's going on? What's going on is I left you five messages and you never called me back. The meeting was over an hour ago and you weren't here. Five messages? Please, you have to understand, I lost my secretary. I don't give it. I lost my company. No, you haven't. We can get them back. I can take care of it. Oh, you can't even take care of yourself. Sorry, Harvey. You're on your own. And then what happens? And then I get up. And how do you feel when you get up? I told you I don't want to talk about how I feel. Then what are you doing here? You know what I'm doing here. I told you, your sleepless nights aren't going to stop until you accept the fact that your secretary isn't coming back. And I told you they'll stop when she does. So just write me another prescription and let me get some sleep in the meantime. It doesn't work that way. Then how does it work? Why don't we start with you taking me through the whole story again? What the hell good is that going to do? You want the truth? I think you might have left some things out. Well, I didn't. And I'm not about to go through this whole damn thing again. Then go and find yourself another doctor. Because I'm not writing a prescription for anything without you talking to me. <laughs> I, I can't stop staring at it. Oh, I noticed. Yeah, so will everyone else. Uh, well, I mean, yeah, that's the point, for everyone to realize that you're my property. Okay, are you saying you own me now? Oh, hell yeah. And this here is just like a little collar for your finger. <laughs> mm. Like, seriously, mm. I know we told my parents last night, but I was thinking that in terms of work, maybe we should keep it to ourselves for a bit. I understand. You do? Sure. It's like there's this bubble around us. You just don't want it to burst yet. And you're okay with that? Rachel, you just agreed to spend the rest of your life with me. Right now, I'm pretty okay with everything. Oh, and it's settled. Mm. We'll tell Donna and that's it. What? What about the bubble? There's no Donna in the bubble. Come on, there's room for Donna in the bubble. You realize I get to sleep with whoever's in the bubble, right? Well, so long as you realize that my dad's in the bubble. Donna it is. <laughs> Come here. All right. Remember that thing online? <laughs> We're doing it. Donna, what the hell are you doing? What does it look like I'm doing? Getting rid of these resumes. No, no. Oh my god, woman, are you crazy? I have interviews with Norma's replacements in 10 minutes. Oh, that's gonna be hard considering the fact that I canceled all your interviews. Damn it, Donna, those are the best candidates in the city. No, Lewis, the best candidate in the city, standing right in front of you.
But you told me no. Now I'm saying yes. This is the most amazing moment of my entire life. Good. I'll get you a temp for a couple weeks and then we'll get started. Wait, I'm sorry, wait. Did, you haven't told Harvey yet? Well, I told him, I just, I have to give him two weeks. Okay, you know, on second thought, as much as I appreciate the gesture, I think you should just stay with Harvey. What are you talking about? This isn't a gesture. No, look, you just, do you remember Mike almost became my associate? What am I talking about? Of course you do. Well, then you'll also remember that just as Mike had said yes, Harvey swoops in and he takes him back from me at the last second. That isn't gonna happen. What you don't know is that I left the room. I went to get Mike this cake that said, welcome to Team Lit. Two minutes later, I come back and there they are, high-fiving laughing, and then they leave. I threw the cake out. I cannot have that happen again with you. Lewis, I told you that isn't gonna happen. Did you not just hear me? It took Harvey two minutes to steal Mike back from me. With you, he has two weeks. So no thank you. Donna, I need to get in touch with Henderson before lunch. And I need to get Braxton a bottle of wine. I took care of all that. Good. Thanks. Is there anything else you want to talk about? Not that I can think of. Did you really think that if you just acted like I changed my mind, that I'd change my mind? Oh, come on, Donna. Lewis. I mean, how long do you think that's going to last? It's going to last however long I want it to last. Donna. Harvey, this is happening. This is my formal notice, but I have no intention of leaving you high and dry, so let's talk about finding you someone in the next two weeks. Finding me someone? Yes, I already have a list of the top legal secretaries in the city. You mean you made a list for Lewis before you decided to abandon me? I'm not abandoning you, Harvey. I'm doing what's best for me. Well, as long as we're doing what's best for ourselves, you know what's best for me? Ripping the Band-Aid off. Harvey! So why don't you clean out your desk, walk yourself over to Lewis, and take that with you. This isn't how two adults who care about each other move on. As far as I'm concerned, two adults who care about each other don't move on at all. So, if you're gonna go, just go. General, wake up for all inmates is at 6 a.m. You'll be standing next to your bed at that time. If you are not, will face disciplinary action. At least five inmate counts will be held during each 24-hour period at random times. You will stand still during every one of those counts. If you are not, you will face disciplinary action. You will be at meals on time if you want to eat. You will be at work on time no matter what. You will keep your cell in a clean and sanitary condition. If you fail in any of these areas, you will face disciplinary action. Good, you're getting the picture. Do you mind if I ask what disciplinary action means? Since you got the ball staff side, I'm sure you're gonna find out soon enough. What's this for? What do you think it's for? Strip naked, put everything you own inside that bag, then follow me. Harvey, what are you doing here? I came to let you know that I dropped him off. And um, he looks as good as he could look. And I think he's going to be OK. I appreciate that. But you could have told me that over the phone. So what are you really doing here? I miss him. I miss him, too. Where the hell are you going? Where do you think I'm going? I'm going home, Louis. Oh, don't you get it? They're all gone. Every single one of them. Yeah, well, we knew that already. No, no, I don't think you understand. I'm not just talking about the partners. I'm talking about everyone from the accountants to the secretaries to the guy who shines my shoes, Donna. All of them, gone. And what exactly do you want me to do about it? I want you to get Harvey on the goddamn phone. Well, I'm not going to do that. Why not? Because tonight's not the night to call Harvey. Why? Because Mike? I don't know if you've noticed, but Mike is gone, along with everybody else. And if we don't figure something out by tonight, we are going to be left with nothing. I didn't say we weren't going to figure something out, Louis. I said we're not calling Harvey. Well, then what the hell are we going to do? Right now, I'm going to go to my office and fix myself a goddamn drink. The first thing I'm going to do is 
first time I met him? <laughs> what do you think I thought? I, I thought he was an idiot. Imagine how I felt when a bunch of weeds spilled out of his briefcase 10 seconds after he walked into his interview. I know, you were so horrified. You got on the phone, you called the police. No, wait, you didn't do that. You offered the idiot a job. That's because after I heard his story, I knew he wasn't an idiot after all. And I knew by the end of that first morning that he wasn't like anyone I'd ever met. And that if I wasn't careful, I was going to be in trouble. To trouble. To trouble. Mm. Look at that. Lewis left me a voicemail. I don't understand. You seem happy about that. That's because one of my favorite pastimes is to listen to one of Lewis's messages. What if he's upset about something? He's always upset about something. That's why one of my favorite pastimes is to listen to one of Lewis's messages. Damn it, Harvey, pick up the goddamn phone because this entire firm is a ghost town and I'm sorry Mike's in prison, but if we don't figure something out, what you and your little sidekick did is gonna be the end of us. And don't give me some bullshit out tonight isn't the time because... I gotta go. Yeah, I know, I'm coming with you. Rachel, you heard what Lewis said. It's gonna be a rough night. You need to stay here. Harvey, it's gonna be a rough night no matter where I am. And at least if I'm with you, there's a chance that I could be of some use. You better get your coat because we don't have much time. Now what? Now you get dressed. And you wait. Would you like some more drinks? Can I offer you an appetizer? Maybe some truffle fries? Or are we allowed to talk business now? All right, Lewis. What do you think we should do, since it was your recommendation that landed us in this mess in the first place? I recommended that because it was a last-ditch effort to get Mike out of prison. And you also said we'd only lose 50% of our partners to Evan Smith. How could I have known that she had the capacity to bring on more than that? Don't you get it? The rest didn't go to Evan Smith. They just walked the hell out and went somewhere else. Then we could sue their asses. With what lawyers, what resources, and what money? Because I don't know if you've noticed, but this firm has been gutted because of your recommendation. No, Jessica, it was gutted because of mine. Damn it, Lewis, I told you not to call him. Well, I did, because he's a partner, and like he just said, he was the one who wanted to sever the non-competes in the first place. You're right, Lewis, I did. But I didn't come down here to play pin the blame on the Harvey. I came down here to figure out what the hell we're gonna do. Then let's get to it. May I help you? Oh, I'm sorry to interrupt, but there was no one at reception, and I have your order here. You gotta be kidding me. You call me down here for an emergency, and then you take the time to order Chinese food? I didn't order anything, asshole, so crouch your tiger, hide your dragon, or I'm gonna Wang Chung your ass out of here. Louis, calm down. Clearly, there's some mistake. No one at this firm has ordered any food. Well, I'm pretty sure this is the right place because the name on your door is Jessica Pearson, and this order is for Jessica Pearson. Yeah, this is Jessica Pearson. Louis! Louis! What? They know I'm not really here to bring you an egg roll, asshole. I'm here to serve you with this. What is that? It's a class action. We're being sued for every case Mike Ross has ever touched. Harvey, what are you doing here? Nothing, I was just driving this baby around and remember how much street parking you had. So that's supposed to impress me? Well, I hope so. Sure as hell impressed me. Well, it's nice to see you, but if you wanted an appointment, you should have called. I'm not here for an appointment. I'm here to ask you out. You're serious? I'm doing a lot of thinking lately. Harvey. Please, let me finish. Things have changed since the last time I saw you. I'm not the same man that I was. I made peace with my family. I got my old associate back. And as of this morning, I'm the head of my firm. And when I thought of sharing that with someone, I thought of you. Well. It doesn't matter because it's completely unethical for a doctor to engage in a relationship with her patient. Not if enough time has passed. And according to the APA, as of three weeks ago, enough time has passed. You did your homework. Sure did. So the only question is, Thursday at 8 or Saturday at 9? One dinner. And if this chemistry you so clearly think exists doesn't, then we part as friends. No hard feelings. If it doesn't work out, no harm, no foul. Thursday. Oh, and uh, if the car's too much, I can always have Ray drive. I like the car. What did you say? I couldn't hear you. I like the car. Good. 
here early. I need you to take point on a consumer fraud hearing for Sandra. Nathan, I need to talk to you. Look, I know things got heated between us the other night, but as far as I'm concerned, it's water under the bridge. So if you're wondering if I'm still upset at you, I'm not. And this is to make sure you're still not upset with me after you hear what I'm about to say. Why am I holding a check for $500,000? Because I've decided to go back to Pierce Inspector Lid. And I gave you my word that I wouldn't leave you high and dry. So let me get this straight. You changed your mind, and now Harvey Specter is buying you back. If it were up to Harvey, you wouldn't be getting a penny. I insisted on this. I, just like I insisted on every other case I take from now on being a pro bono. It sounds like you insisted on that to make yourself feel better. No, Nathan, I did that because I care about doing this kind of work. And if you're okay with it, I'd even like the idea of us partnering on a case every now and then. What if I say I'm not okay with any of this? I know that you were the one that gave me another chance to be a lawyer when no one else would. But don't punish the clinic. It's a lot of money. With that, you could replace me and help a lot of people for a long time. Is that for me? No. Actually, it's for me. You're later than usual this morning. I've been waiting for you. Donna, about the other night, I know you said you wanted more, but before you say anything... I want to be a partner. Partner? Yes. I figured out what I want, and I want to be a partner at this firm. Donna, I don't mean to insult you, but you're not even a lawyer. Good. Because my being a partner isn't about the law. It's about keeping this firm running, which I've been doing for as long as I can remember. I know that, but it doesn't mean that I can get... I've given over 10 years of my life to this place, Harvey, and I've done it all from your desk. All I'm asking is for a seat at the table. I'll have to ask Lewis about it. Does that mean that you're on board? I don't know. It's Mike's first day back. It's a big ask. And on top of all of that, I've decided to tell Lewis that I'm taking full control as managing partner. Well, congratulations, Harvey. But which is it? Lewis? Mike? Big ask? Because I'd hate to think I mustered the courage to do this. And then once you get on that elevator, it's out of your mind. I give you my word, I will not forget about it. OK. I'll tell you what, Robert. Your baby girl just got married. I'm gonna throw you a bone. Your name goes first. No, no. <laughs> you think I don't know what you're doing. Then I owe you. Yours goes first. You saying I owe you? You do owe me. I saved your ass. Well, you only did that because we put you in a terrible position. Wait, that's against me. Jesus Christ, what have I got myself into? I'll tell you what. Got yourself into Zane Specter Lit. Or Specter Zane Lit. Either way, lit, lit comes, comes last. last. <laughs> hey, you want to go out and get a burger? I do. But it's 2 a.m. If I go out for a burger right now, the only thing I'm getting is a divorce. Copy that. I'll get you one from the kitchen. Yeah, meet me downstairs. Hide it in the gift bag or something. <laughs> You're here early. I am. I know this is about the time you finish your morning run. Look, Harvey, if this is about me getting into it with Lewis while you were gone. It isn't. I didn't even know that happened. Well, you might as well hear about it now. I came to him with an idea to save the firm that involved making me temporary managing partner, and he bit my head off. Let me guess. He thought you were coming after me. Harvey, I would never do that to you. I know that, but that's not what I'm here to talk about. I'm here to tell you that as of this morning, we're merging with Robert Zane. What? Alex. I don't believe it. When I came over, you said my name would be the one to go up next. I know that, but this was the only way to save the firm. And you know as well as I do, Zane has been a name partner longer than me and Lewis combined. All right. I get it. But we had an agreement. And I want your word right now you're going to honor it. You have my word. Your name goes up next. All right. One more thing. 
Did Lewis know about the merger before this morning? Yeah, why? Because if he didn't tell me about it, he must really not trust me. Which means when it is time to put my name up there... Lewis will be fine, Alex. And what if he's not? Like I said, you have my word. Of course I would do that for you. I would do anything for you because I love you. I promise I will never bring it up again. You never have to get a Maine Coon. Sheila? Yes. Anyway, I brought you in because I want... Katrina, what's on your mind? Nothing. It's just giving up cats. Louis, after all she put you through, are you sure? I am. And besides, she's still open to getting a short hair. Well, then I'm happy for you. And I'm happy for you, too, because today is the day that you get to make your two greatest loves more efficient. Don't tell me. We're merging with Zane. We have more associates than we can handle, and you need the one person who worked at both firms to call that herd. Exactly. And now I need you to come up with a list of the 10 least efficient associates without telling me names or whether or not they come from Zane or Russ. Got it. And Katrina? Thanks for your concern about Sheila and me. Louis, you know I care for you deeply and in a completely asexual manner. And I, too, care for you deeply and see you neither as man nor woman. Thank you, Lewis. Kinder words were never spoken. I'll have my list for you by the end of the day. I'm gonna miss her, too. I'm not sure which is worse, finding out Mike was a fraud or that he's taking my daughter away. Pretty sure it was the fraud thing. You probably got a point. Speaking of frauds and your daughter. She left that for me. A little welcome to the firm from your little girl. By the way, Harvey wants to meet at 9.30 in the conference room. So in the meantime, why don't you set yourself up in Mike's old office? Thank you, Donna. It's nice to have you here, Robert. Well, we'll see how nice it is once I tell Harvey it's not his old office that I'm looking to be in. Claiming managing partner already. Isn't that a bold statement for day one? Let me tell you something, Red. I've been making bold statements my entire career. I'm sure as hell not about to stop now. Call for you. Says it's urgent. This is Samantha Wheeler. Samantha, it's Katrina. I got in early this morning because I figured we'd have a lot to take care of with the whole Robert situation, which is why I was here when the call came in. And Katrina, I'm in the middle of a workout. Can you just cut to it? You need to get in here. And you need to get in here now. Rachel, call me as soon as you get this. It happened. And by it, I mean, oh, sh I gotta go. Who's that? No one. Rachel? Told her, didn't you? No. Yeah. Well, in that case, I hope she listens to her messages before Mike, because I just left him a doozy. What? I didn't authorize you to do that. Wait, seriously, what did you tell him? What did you tell Rachel? That you were better the first time. Good, because that's exactly what I told Mike about you. No, you didn't. And neither did I, because you weren't. Because more vigorous isn't necessarily better. Neither is younger. Really? 12 hours in, and you're going to trot that one out? 12 years in, and no, Donna, I'm not. Because I am glad I came over last night. Me too. You do know I'm coming over again tonight, right? Yeah. Harvey, I do know that. There is one thing that I don't know. 
What exactly changed to make you come over here? Are you expecting someone? No. But I do know who it is, and it's bad. How bad? Louis, bad. He just texted me. He's right outside. Holy sh He cannot see me in here. What are we gonna do? Well, I can't climb out the window if that's what you're suggesting. We're 12 stories up. We could stick the landing. Donna, I know you're in this. Wait a minute. What are we so afraid of? Harvey, are you saying what I think you're saying? I am. Let's let him in. All right, we need to talk. We need to talk right now. I went to Harvey's. He didn't answer his door. So now I'm here. And you're here. I am. And you're in the same exact clothes you were in last night. Guilty as charged. Oh, my God. I know exactly what you two are doing. Louis, before you jump. You were up all night trying to figure out how you were going to handle the Zane situation. We were, indeed. Up all night. Thinking about the situation. Well, I can't believe it. You should have called me. We could have done it together. Could have, but it's, it's probably best that we didn't. I don't know. They do say the more the merrier. Harvey. You know, I don't care that you left me out. The most important thing is that you guys were banging it out all night. That, that we, we were. were. So what'd you come up with? Probably nothing as helpful as what you've come up with. Well, the only thing I know is that we need to put out a press release as soon as possible. Then you came to the right place because Donna is top notch at releases. Well, thank you, Harvey. You know, you're not so bad yourself. You please stop stroking each other's egos. I'm just as good at releasing as either one of you. In fact, I hammered one out this morning. Don't. Louis, this is great. Takes responsibility while still standing behind our partner. So we are agreed. We stand behind Robert. We do. Well, then I'll put this out right away. And Harvey, when you get in, get together with Samantha. Make sure the two of you lock up every last one of Robert's clients. Come on, Lewis. I don't get it. How could he be such a good lawyer? and not see what's right in front of his face. Well, to be fair, you didn't see what was right in front of your face for 12 years. Fair enough. But it does beg the question. Let's not tell Lewis or anybody else. Why not? Because Lewis might be clueless, but he's right. There's going to be a lot of blowback from the hearing, and I'd rather share our news when the people we care about are in the right frame of mind to hear it. About that news, before Lewis got here, you asked what it changed. Harvey, I want to know everything. And when I do, I want to be able to hang on every last word. But now's not the time. So what do you say that you go home and you change into that armor and you get ready to fight for Robert's good name?